Give God a big hand of praise, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. I want us to finish our series today on the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And um, we're going to pray for people today. Um, I want to talk about how to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Very simple. Very simple. I want, we want to minister to those who um, have not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Um, in our last sessions, we spoke about the dynamics of speaking with other tongues. Remember, speaking with other tongues is the initial Bible evidence of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It is the proof that one has received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. In other words, how do we know that the person has been baptized with the Holy Spirit? We know they are baptized with the Holy Spirit when they speak with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them utterance. The law of first mention, um, when we looked at the law of first mention, in other words, where this incident was first mentioned, we discovered that um, the 120 disciples, because um, um, this happened first of all in Acts chapter 2. The, the disciples that were tearing in the upper room, um, the Bible says in Acts chapter, chapter 2, um, I think verse 4, and the Bible says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see that when the incident was initially mentioned in the Bible, is that the first group of people to receive the Pentecostal experience or the baptism with the Holy Spirit is that they spoke with other tongues. And then subsequent to that, if we look at the incidents in Scripture where people receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, it's the same common denominator, they would pray and speak with other tongues. So the question today that we want to ask and, to ask and answer is, how do we receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit? How do we receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Remember, I said to you that nobody can teach you how to pray in other tongues. Nobody can teach you that. It's not a language that you learn just like you learn English or any other earthly language. But it's a language you receive supernaturally. So we're going to look at how okay there are several things that will help us to release our faith in order to receive this pentecostal experience of the baptism with the holy spirit so i want to share with you some principles that will help you receive the baptism with the holy spirit number one you must be born again salvation um, as we said from the very beginning, is the only prerequisite to receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Baptism with the Holy Spirit um, is an experience that only those who are born again can experience. It is not for the unsaved. So, before one can, be, can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, they must be born again. The new birth experience is the only prerequisite for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, true repentance and confession of faith in Christ as Lord is a prerequisite to receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, that is the people that were part of the crowd in the day of Pentecost. He said, repent. Repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So repentance, baptism, and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Or the baptism with the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I need to say, and I've said this in the beginning, that the order is not important. It doesn't mean that you have to be born again and be baptized in water, and then you can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that if you are born again now, you can't receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit until you are baptized in water. Okay? So, but Peter put that in that order here. But for an example, uh, when I got born again, I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit um, before our, I was baptized in water. I got born again on a Sunday. And then on a Monday, I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And three weeks later, I was baptized in water. Okay? But the prerequisite to receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the new birth experience. So Peter says to them, uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the baptism with the Holy Spirit is for people who have repented, people who are born again, people that have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. This is the only prerequisite. You see, Jesus taught that the world, that is the unsaved, could not receive the Holy Spirit. In John 14, verse 17, it says, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the infilling of the Holy Spirit is not for sinners. It's not for unbelievers. It is for believers. An unsaved person, the Bible says, cannot have the Holy Spirit indwelling him or her. Therefore, one has to be a believer to receive, you know, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And one has to be a believer to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Remember, speaking in other tongues is praying out of your spirit, man, by the help of the Holy Spirit within you. Now, the unbelievers don't have the Holy Spirit within them. So how can they now pray in tongues? Who will give them utterance? Because you only receive the Holy Spirit indwells you at the new birth. So if a person is not born again, then they are not indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And if they are not indwelled by the Holy Spirit, how then can they pray in tongues? They cannot. Now the Bible says unsaved people cannot receive the Holy Spirit. It says the world cannot receive because they neither see him nor knows him. Okay, so the world cannot receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. However, the world can receive the gift of eternal life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, Jesus is God's gift to the world. The world can receive Jesus Christ as savior. A sinner can be born again, but a person has to be born again before he can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God's gift to the world, but the Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church. Can somebody say amen? So, first of all, a person must be born again. So those who are saved are ready to receive the Holy Spirit and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. There is no more you can do to qualify to receive the Holy Spirit. The only qualification is the new birth experience. You can't be any cleaner than being washed in the blood of Jesus and being cleansed from all sin. Saved people go to heaven. If they are good enough to go to heaven, then surely they are good enough to have a bit more of heaven in them. Good enough not because of their own merit, good enough because of the gift of eternal life, because of the grace of God. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Now, those that are backslidden would obviously have to get back into fellowship with God before they can receive this Pentecostal experience. Now, some people think they need to be perfect before they can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But the great apostle Paul himself was not. You can read Philippians 3 verses 12 and 13. In any case, if you can reach perfection without the Holy Spirit, then you don't need him. So, in other words, we are not saying that you need to be perfect. Because if you can be perfect without the Holy Spirit, then you don't need him. You only need to be born again. Yeah, but pastor, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I'm born again, but I have a lying problem. You know, pastor, I'm born again, but you know, um, you know, I have, 
you know, I have gossiping lips. Uh, Pastor, I'm, I'm born again, but you know, I have this terrible temper. Do you think I will receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit? All that's needed is for you to be born again. It's not perfect believers who receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, if it was for perfect believers, then none of us will qualify. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that, you know, if you have issues. Many people fail to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit because they feel I'm not a good, I'm not a good enough Christian. I, I'm not holy enough. No, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not perfect enough. Uh, this is for so and so. You know, I, I have my own issues. Of course, you need to deal with your own issues. It's important you deal with your own issues. But that does not disqualify you from receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit as long as you are born again. Did you hear what I said? Now deal with your issues. You know, it's important to live a holy life, the Bible says. But you see, you don't merit or earn this Pentecostal experience by being a good Christian. Can somebody say amen? In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 1, and 1 Corinthians 3 verses 1 through 2. See, Paul is talking to the, Philippi, I mean, to, the, to the Corinthian church. They were carnal. They were body ruled. Now, here we see in these passages of scripture that even carnal fleshy Christians can receive. The carnal Christians need the Holy Spirit to help them change and grow. Repentance and a new birth prepares a person to be filled with the Holy Spirit, not works or merit or Christian character and maturity. Christian character and maturity is very important. Holiness is extremely important as a believer. The Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. But that is not a prerequisite to receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Pastor, are you saying that, you know, with the issues of anger that I have, you know, with the weaknesses that I have, you know, I can come, you know, as long as I'm born again, I can come and receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You heard me right, yes. You know, because there are some people who will say, no, pastor, you know, I, I heard you, you said we can come and receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm born again. But gee, pastor, I looked at my life and I realized that, hey, I still have issues. So let me go and sort myself out first. Then I'll come and receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now, if you can sort your life first on your own, then why then do you need the, the Holy Spirit? It is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It is the, that experience, you know, that God will use to even change you in areas where you find it difficult. Can somebody say amen? amen. So tell your neighbor, say neighbor, just come as you are, as long as you are born again. Number two, the second principle is you must desire the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The first requirement is the new birth. You must be born again. The second requirement is you must desire the experience. You must desire the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The second requirement is that you must deeply desire the baptism with the Holy Spirit. There must be a heart preparation. You prepare your heart by hungering and seeking and asking for the Holy Spirit. This means... Uh, we cannot take a neutral position expecting God to seek us and sovereignly pour out his spirit on us. So you have to, to seek, you have to desire for this experience. You can't just say, okay, okay, let's see. Well, let's see if I will receive the experience or not. You cannot be neutral. You cannot develop a wait and see attitude. Or you cannot come with an attitude, well... Let's just see. They said it's for believers. I'm a believer. Uh, let me just go. No, no, you have to desire it. You have to desire for it. You have to desire for the experience. Can somebody say amen? Jesus instructs us to ask, seek, and knock when desiring to receive the Spirit. The same principle is found in Matthew 5 verse 6. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. It is your hunger for the things of God. Your hunger for the presence of God. Your hunger for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. If you are hungry for the baptism with the Holy Spirit, 
then God will grant you the desires of your heart. You have to desire it. I listen to what I'm saying. You have to desire it. To receive any spiritual blessing or experience from the Lord, we must desire it and seek after it. The scripture shows the importance of us taking the initiative in order to receive from God. You can read James chapter 4 verses 8 through 10. Now Jesus also expressed it this way in John 7. If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. If any man thirst. That's a condition. And that's an invitation. But the invitation is given to those who are thirsty. If any man thirst, let him come. So if you are not thirsty, stay where you are, Jesus says. Jesus says this invitation is for those who are thirsty. So to receive the blessings of God, to receive from God, you have to hunger for it, you have to thirst for it, you have to seek for it, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit is no exception. And Jesus here says, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. The word thirst means an eager famishing, keen, all-consuming craving and passion for the soul for complete union with God and the fullness of the Spirit. You know, like the Bible says in Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, as their dear pants for the water brook, so pants my soul after you. The word pant means a deep longing. A deep longing. You know, it's, it's you know, with all these, you know, extreme temperatures, it gets extremely hot. And I'm sure... In one of these, these days, you, you, you panted for water. You couldn't wait to get a bottle of ice cold water in this hot weather, you know? And how many of you know that, you know, when you got it, you didn't sip. You just goggled it. Am I right? Because you were panting. It was a deep craving and a deep longing. You may have been playing music in the car or wherever you may be, but your craving and longing was, I'm thinking about that bottle of water. I'm just going to pull into that garage and just get a bottle of water. Your mind, everything, every fiber of your being was consumed by getting a bottle of water. Am I right? That's the craving. That's the desire. Well, when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the baptism with the Holy Spirit, you need to have a similar craving, a similar desire. Every fiber of your being must desire to receive this experience. You must crave for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You must desire for it. You must be thirsty for it. Can somebody say amen? Jesus says, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Let him come to me. Come in surrender of your will to Jesus, the baptizer. Let him come to me and drink. Breathe in by faith of the Holy Spirit out of the believer will flow unlimited power to do the works of Christ he says he who believes as the scripture says out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water the belly is the innermost part of man that is your spirit man rivers is a constant flow from the believer of the spirit without measure so when Jesus said this in John chapter 7, the Bible says he was talking about the Holy Spirit. If any man thirst, let him come. So, those who would receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, they must be thirsty. They must desire for it. You can't just have a casual attitude. Ah, well, we've been taught about this baptism with the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, I'll just go to the front and you know, you come skeptical. I'll just go and see what happens. If you do that, you will not receive. Amen. You have to have a desire. Can somebody say amen? So the question is, are you thirsty for the water of the spirit? If you are, then you may come unto Jesus and drink. Remember, Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. It's just as simple as that. You just come to Jesus and drink. Remember that you do not have to earn the blessing. 
if you did, then it would no longer be a gift of the Holy Spirit. You should never end or merit this wonderful blessing, nor do. So do you have. It is yours. It is a free gift. Remember, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is a free gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. You don't have to earn it by being the holiest Christians of all the Christians. You don't have to earn it by praying three times a day. You don't have to earn it by paying your tithes. Now, praying three times a day, it's important. Paying your tithes, it's important. Living a holy life, it's important. But that's not what you do in order to earn this. It's a free gift. Now, what do you do when a gift is given to you, Basalwane? You receive it. You receive it. A gift, when you, you are given a gift, it's not because you've done something to merit the gift. So you just receive it. So the only prerequisite is being born again. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is a gift that is freely given to you. So all you have to do is to hunger for it, to desire for it, and then to freely receive it. So number one, you must be born again. Number two, you must hunger for it. And number three, follow these four simple, you know, words. I want you to follow these four simple words. I'd like to suggest four simple little words which would enable you to receive this precious blessing. The words are renounce, relax, receive, and respond. Renounce, relax, receive, respond. Renounce, relax, receive, respond. Number one, remember, I'm giving you steps to receive. Number one, renounce. What do we mean by renounce? Paul wrote to the converts in the wicked city of Corinth, you have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Second Corinthians 4 verse 2. The Greek word is a pay per man, translated renounce, means to disown, to separate, and to depart completely from. It says, but have renounced the hidden, concealed, private, inward, secret things. But you have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, shame, or disgrace. Now, in the light of the above, it is important to make sure we have fully repented or turned away from all known sin. Especially sin involving witchcraft, ancestral worship, worship of idols, or Ouija boards, sorcery, tarot cards, tea leaves, fortune telling or tellers, charms, amulets, and such alike. Now, 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 now. It shouldn't seem like I'm contradicting myself. I said, you don't have to be perfect to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. How many of you remember I said that? Right? You don't have to be the most cleanest and the most holiest Christian. But that does not mean that you have to come with a known sin that you are not willing to repent from. Hello? So as imperfect as I am, I don't end the blessing. But as I come before God, Knowing that, that grieves the Holy Spirit, that grieves God, what must I do? I need to renounce them. So in other words, if there is a secret sin in my life, a secret unconfessed sin in my life, I need to renounce it before God. We are not saying, you know, okay, it's a come as you are affair. I know that I've got issues. I know that I've got bitterness and resentment in my heart and unforgiveness. Pastor said, it's okay, we come as we are. So I'm coming with my bitterness and my resentment and I'm retaining it. No problem, I just want to receive. No, 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 no. The, the second statement was saying, you don't have to be perfect first to receive the experience. But if there are issues in your life, known sin, you know you have stolen somebody else's TV. It is in your house. You were watching it this morning. 
and, and, and you come to receive the baptism. <laughs> it doesn't mean, okay, God, they said I must come as I am, so I can still keep the stolen TV. No. No, no, no. Renounce. It's a very strong word. Let me, let, let, let me go through it again. Renounce. It means to disown, to separate and depart completely from. But you have renounced the hidden, concealed, private, inward, secret things. But you have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, shame, and disgrace. Now, here, it's, it's particularly things of idolatry and occultism. Now, I have been doing this thing for many years that I've been a pastor. I've been praying for people to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what happens. There are times where people will come to the front to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit and we will pray and they will, st they will start manifesting and speaking in a strange language. And many people will think, wow, that person has received the baptism with the Holy Spirit and I will be standing there and I will descend and say, mm-mm, Kitty pie pie in Tochi. You see what happens is the, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, you know, will trigger certain things. If there is a foreign spirit that has to do with idolatry, that you have not renounced, that has to do with occultism. Remember, two bulls cannot stay in the same crawl. Now, a believer cannot be possessed by demons. A believer is already possessed by the God through the Holy Spirit in their spirit. But in your mind and in, in your body, you can be oppressed from the outside by demon spirits. You understand? So remember we said prerequisite number one, you must be born again. Number two, um, you know, it's a come as you are experience. But... And then we said, no, we must be hungry for, for the experience. You must be hungry for it. Okay? But now we are saying, um, in these four things that you need to do, you have to renounce. In other words, if you were into occultism, even though you are now a believer, you are born again, there's no doubt. It's got, it, there's no doubt about the validity of your Christian experience. But the fact that you still you are still keeping, you still have not renounced and disowned and separated yourself from occultism. It will hinder you from receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The fact that you have not renounced and separated yourself from, you know, marine spirits, marine witchcraft, from, you know, being a sangoma, you know, or from ancestral worship, you are still putting on a leather bracelet and you still want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work. How many of you know a leather bracelet? It's panda. You know, when they panda is bonagala, when they panda is nabonaga, this is like Halloween. We born in daughter, Ishaye isu to ganti chupile this way and that way. And sometimes you wonder, why is this person not receiving? Why is this person not receiving? Because you have not renounced. Barcelona, you can't kiss demons and kiss Jesus at the same time. So we have to renounce to disown the hidden works of darkness. Disown ancestral worship. Otherwise, it will hinder you from receiving the experience. Renounce any known sin. Renounce it. Renounce pride. Renounce any known sin. The Bible says, God has given the Holy Spirit to them that obey him. Acts 5 verse 32. God commands us to renounce and separate completely from the concealed, secret, dishonest, disgraceful things when we ask his Holy Spirit. Look at Acts 19 verses 18 and 19. Many of the believers who had been practicing black magic 
confessed their deeds and brought their incantation books and charms and burned them at a public bonfire. These people had occultic books. They got born again. They didn't sell the books. They didn't keep the books. They brought the books to be burned. That is renunciation. What did you do with that bag full of bones and concoctions that you have inherited from grandfather, from grandmother, from aunt? You want to raise an altar in your home when there is an altar, an ancestral altar there. What, what, what are you thinking? That, that would be counterproductive. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, I used to go to Zion Postal and they prescribed me a white jacket with three red crosses. Now I'm born again. I just want to keep this as a souvenir to show where I come from. Bend the thing because it will attract water spirits. Hey, what will I want to do? But I was talking about a message. Maybe we'll preach about this some other time. Are you operating under an open or closed heaven? And I was saying something. I was saying that there are things in our lives that closes the heavens above us. And one such things are cursed objects. Cursed objects. If you have the statue of Buddha, ladies, in your home, and you are using the statue of Buddha to decorate, that statue is an altar itself. It's an altar of Buddhism. It will close the heaven above your home. Some of you are saying, you know, when I try to pray in my house, it's very hard. But when I come to church, it's easier. Some, some of the things that makes it hard in your home could be these objects that, you know, have become magnets to attract demonic presence in your house and they are closing the heavens above your house. Even with jewelry, Bazalwan, I love jewelry, but I'm very careful. Some of the, the symbols in the jewelry that you buy are satanic and you can easily be initiated into witchcraft. You can easily be initiated and dedicated into spirits with the jewelry that you wear. That does not demonize people who put on jewelry. I love jewelry. You better believe it. If God, the God that I serve, if the streets of heaven are paved with gold, I better enjoy it here so I don't become a stranger in heaven. I don't look at me like, you know, there's some, some of these people that are, they go to the extremes. Each time they see a pastor wearing a ring, oh, he's drawing power from that ring. That's ignorance. Just because there are occultic people who wear big rings and they rub the ring for the power to be, it doesn't mean that anybody that puts on the ring is occultic. That is why I will enjoy the best here. The Bible says the streets of heaven are paved with gold. So if they are paved with gold, God even puts gold on the streets. What's wrong if it is on my body? But I'm very careful that when I buy, you need to be very careful, listen to the Holy Spirit, very selective, because you may buy jewelry innocently and you put it on, it's a picture of something else, or something else that you don't know. Meanwhile, by buying that, that becomes a doorway for the demons to come and oppress you. Because maybe that's an occultic symbol. 
And all of a sudden you wonder why is it that my life is, you know, it's, it's not, things are not going well in my life. I don't want to get into the issues of deliverance here. That is why when you buy a house, enter the house in the spirit first before you enter in, in the natural. You don't know who owned the house before. You don't know what was done in the house. You don't know who the house was dedicated to. So deal with the things in the spirit, spiritually. The house might look beautiful on the outside, but in the realm of the spirit, there may be demonic entities. You find people in nice, beautiful houses, but they can't sleep. You buy a second-hand car. Do you know who owned it before? Do you know who owned it? There are people who own their cars and they tie things around under the seats and under the car to protect the car. You just see a nice, you know, car. You just buy it. One kick, wonderful. Less millage and you come in. You d there are demonic entities that are attached to the car from the previous owner. That's why praying and dedicating a car, it's important, and property, it's important. So, Bomam, when you buy things to decorate the house, be careful, be very careful what you buy. Because you may buy objects, cast objects. Now, things that are dedicated to spirits, to witchcraft, attract demonic presence in your life. So what are we saying? You may be born again, but if you have not renounced witchcraft, you have not renounced idolatry, you have not renounced marine spirits, you have not renounced and you are still keeping their properties, it will hinder you from receiving. So renunciation is important. Renunciation is different from repentance. Repentance is turning around. Renunciation is disowning. I disown. I have nothing to do with this anymore. So these people burn the witchcraft books that they had. Say this after me. Say, Lord, I renounce all forms of witchcraft occultic involvement ancestral worship in my life in the name of Jesus I renounce the worship of idols Ouija boards sorcery tarot cards tea leaves fortune telling charms amulets and every other object that is satanic in the name of Jesus I reject them and I renounce them in my life in the name of Jesus. I cut ties with them in the spirit. I renounce the covenants. I renounce the dedications. I renounce the initiations that have to do with this involvement in Jesus' name. Amen. Renounce, 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 renounce. renounce it's important if you don't renounce it will hinder I've prayed for so many people each time you pray for them then demons start manifesting because they have not renounced so the second uh, advice is relax everybody say relax so often people become tensed up when it comes to receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. There is no need for that to happen. It will hinder you rather than help you. Just relax in God's presence. Some people try too hard to receive. You know, the things of God, Bazalwane, are so simple that we stumble in their simplicity. Uh, you know, I've activated people oftentimes on, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, oftentimes where, you know, we have a simple, you know, a simple exercise, you know, get a thought from the throne. And you say to people, relax and listen to your spirit. And you find people, you know, they grit their teeth and you see veins all over. He's trying hard to hear from God. Relax. You know what I find? I find that when I'm relaxed in God's presence, not tensed up, just relaxed, the word of the Lord comes. I was in a church last night. 
The pastor said this to me before I came. He said, please, men of God, no pressure on you, but look, if the Lord lays a word for the church in your heart, please prophesy. We know your prophetic ministry. Please prophesy. I said, okay, it's fine. Let's see what God does. Didn't put any pressure on myself. Walked in there. Just when I put my Bible on the seat, raise up my hands, we are worshiping, bang, the word dropped in my spirit. No stress, nothing, relaxed in the presence of God, the word comes. The things of God are so simple. We complicate them. You see, Christianity is simple, religion is complicated. And that's why you say to people, God said this to me, and people say, huh? God said what? God. Can God talk? You know, some people think God is too busy. God is too busy. He is big. And when you say, God said this to me, they, they think you are being too proud. Because according to them, God must be having so many protocols to listen to an individual. They complicate things. But let me tell you, the things of God are so simple. All of you here can hear the voice of God. All of you. In fact, you have heard the voice of God before. Not once, not twice, many times. And sometimes it's just that you don't think it is the voice of God. You know, sometimes when God speaks to us in the midst of the noise, it's that still small voice at the background. That still small voice that you just ignore. Some people say, I thought it was my mind. But it was God speaking to you. That's why to hear God's voice, we need to be still. Quieten the racing mind. Practice the presence of God. And be sensitive. But it's not difficult. Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. How many of you are Jesus' sheep? Of course, if you are Jesus' sheep, then you can hear his voice. But religion complicates things. We try so hard, and yet it is so simple. So, just relax and receive. Relax in God's presence. You don't have to work up an emotion. Just yield to the will of God. Emotions come later. Many have felt deep down in their hearts, inside them, the stirring of words they didn't understand or recognize as English or any other language. They have heard or learned, but failed to take a positive step of faith to open their mouth and speak out those sounds. Why? Maybe they were frightened. And when this happened, just relax and speak out the words, not in English or any other language you know or have learned that you hear or sense down in the inside. The Holy Spirit is the one giving the utterance. You are the one who will do the talking. And your mind doesn't understand them. Remember, they don't come from your mind. They come from your spirit. So what, what you need to do is to speak them out. So some other people start questioning, what is this? What is this, you know? And they start resisting. Because they are, they are so tensed up. Because they think, Barcelona, they think that some people think that, you know, if I receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, maybe my head must shake. My whole body must shake. It must be rattled because it is the Holy Spirit. You know, they, they imagine all kinds of things. Maybe this is how I will feel. Maybe this is how I, it has got nothing to do with feelings. Emotions will come next. But so just relax. And the words that build up in the inside of you, you speak them out. Okay, I need a pianist. Uh, Kai, are you here? Now, first, therefore, let me encourage you to relax. Relax physically, and this will help you relax spiritually and emotionally. Why not sit down somewhere comfortably? Okay, but in this case, we'll get you to stand. But you know, the disciples were sitting down in the day of Pentecost. They were just sitting down. You know, if you want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, as seated as you are, where you are, we could pray and, you know, you can receive. You don't have to come to the front here, even though we will ask you to come. Okay. But you just relax. Just relax. You know, 
the, the disciples in the early church, the day of Pentecost, they were sitting, Acts 2 2. So, this is a good scriptural posture of receiving the Spirit. Sit back and relax. You are in good hands, the hands of Jesus. He's the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. But even if you are asked to stand, you can still relax. Amen. Remember, it is not the pastor that is baptizing you with the Holy Spirit, it is Jesus. I'm not the one that baptizes people with the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to be a catalyst. I'm just going to be an instrument that will help you receive the experience. But it is Jesus who is the baptizer. I'm just going to be a facilitator. The third word is receive. Everybody say receive. Now it will be good right now for you to ask Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. But I will tell you when to do it. The Bible says your heavenly father gives the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. In Luke 11 verse 13. So you ask simply quietly and in faith and that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna lead you galatians 3 20 says this only will i learn from you receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith you see you receive by faith you need to ask for the baptism with the holy spirit in faith and receive by faith to do that you need to know that the gift has already been given the gift has already been given Acts 2 verses 1 through 4 on the day of Pentecost the Holy Spirit was poured out and has been here ever since and it's up to the believers now to receive the Holy Spirit remember the Holy Spirit is already here on earth the Holy Spirit is not gonna come from heaven he has already done so over 2,000 years ago the gift has already been given the challenge with you is to receive. The gift has already been given. The challenge for you and I is to receive. To receive. So you learn to receive in Acts 19 verse 2. Note, it says, Paul says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And not did God give you the Holy Spirit? So you receive. Acts 8 15 Peter and John also prayed that they might receive the Holy Spirit verse 17 they laid their hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit so you do the receiving you do the receiving it is of great importance to notice the word gift in Acts 2 38 God specified that it was to be a gift given not purchased one doesn't buy a gift he simply receives it by faith so you need to receive by faith you need to ask Jesus, the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, to give you this gift by faith. Amen. And you need to expect to receive also when hands are laid on you. So some, in Acts 19 verse 6, they had hands laid on them. But in the day of Pentecost, nobody laid hands on them. So you need to understand that you can receive the gift, the baptism with the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. But sometimes you can receive it without anybody laying hands on you. My cousin Tony just, you know, he, he's recently been born again. Got, he got born again about two months ago or so. And, and, and he sent me a text. He says he, he was in the church at Liboeng. And in the nighttime, the, the young man has been so hungry and zealous to grow. All of a sudden, bang, he started speaking with other tongues. Nobody's there to pray for him. Nobody's there to lay hands on him. So the, you can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit without anybody laying hands on you. You can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit alone. I remember in Alexandra in 1919, we had a, I had a lady who was one of our, my key members. We prayed for people to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We prayed for her for the whole year. She would find it difficult to receive. It was so bad that she felt like maybe she was not properly saved. We had to counsel her. Men, we will have other speakers visiting, pray for her, she would not receive. Until one day, she was alone in the room and she was worshipping God and bang, the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus baptized her with the Holy Spirit and she began to speak with other tongues. And, and, and sometimes the hindrance is in the mind. You know, people, you know, are afraid to, you know, to lose control. You know, some people think, hey, when I receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, will I be, still be able to keep quiet when I start praying? Will I still be able to control myself? Eh? Will, will, uh, they are afraid to lose control. So they, they, they close their eyes and they are opening one eye to find out what's happening. Uh, you know. But you, you need to relax. 
and let go. You must be willing to lose control. Because if you don't lose control, then you get distracted. Then you get tensed up and distracted. And that hinders your receiving. You need not fear receiving something else false. Jesus said to, to, to the leaders, the religious leaders of his day, he says, who of you, if your son asks you for a fish, you will give him a snake? And he says, if you as being, you know, as bad as you are, are able to give goods to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So as, as a child, if you as a father, biological father, earthly father, can give good gifts to your children, why do you think that God will give you a snake instead of the Holy Spirit? So don't be afraid to receive anything wrong. Let me tell you, when you come up here, you will either receive the Holy Spirit or the presence of God will expose any spirit that has been oppressing you that is not of God. In that case, we'll cast out the demon and you will receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? So you can pray the prayer of faith. I mean, even if you are alone, even if you are alone, you can pray the prayer of faith and ask the Father to baptize you. Number four, respond. Now we come to the fourth step. Your response to the Spirit is now beginning to feel your whole being. You must respond in faith and obedience to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It is both natural and supernatural experience. It is the moving of the Spirit combined with human yielding response and faith. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not able, and Jesus is not able to baptize you without your cooperation. You have your role to play. He has his role to play. The Bible says they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the words to say. That is the way mouth translation. Note first, they they began to speak. They were doing the speaking. That is your part. It was their voice, their vocal cords, their lips and mouth. They used. Note the second, the spirit gave them words to say. That is the spirit part. When the spirit does his part, we must respond by doing our part. They began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. So what's going to happen is the Spirit of God is going to play His part. He's going to give you utterance. But you need to play your part. You need to do the speaking. See, the Holy Spirit does not speak in tongues. It is you who speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives you utterance. So some people, the Holy Spirit gives them utterance and they stand there and they don't want to speak out. They don't respond. They don't want to speak out. They expect, you know some voice to speak no no you are the one that does the speaking can somebody say amen you are the one that do the speaking the holy spirit supplies the words but the man does the speaking listen to these following scriptural references mark 16 17 they the believers will speak with new tongues it is the believers who do the speaking acts 10 46 they were hearing them speaking with other tongues it was the people Acts 19 6 and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying so in all these scriptural references there was a cooperative action between men and the Holy Spirit you must do the speaking you must do the speaking the Holy Spirit will not speak for you you must do the speaking the Holy Spirit will now bring the words but you do the speaking lastly begin to speak in tongues You begin to speak in tongues. Now that you have received by faith, you must put your faith to action by giving expression to the bubbling inside of you. God can only give utterance, but it is your duty to speak it out. When the spirit moves on your tongue and your lips, you lift your voice and put sound to it. You will be speaking in tongues just like I am. Down inside, there will be phrases or words or sounds that will start to form and seek expression. This is the Holy Spirit giving you the utterance. Begin to exercise your faith by speaking in an unknown language unto the Lord. The duration, quality, and ex expertise of your particular tongue can vary dramatically from that of others um, or from that what you thought it should be. Now, Basalwan, 
your tongues will not be the same as my tongues. Your tongues will not be the same as the other person's tongues. My tongues are not a benchmark. The Holy Spirit will give you your own prayer language. So when I, I pray in tongues, I would be encouraging you not that you should follow me. Now, here's what I have experienced. When I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit after getting born again, I only received four words. Four words. And you know, I was like a scratch CD, you know, when I was praying these four words. And it used to bother me because when I went out with my friend Sam, you know, he would pray and then he would break and he would get into other dimensions of the spirit and he's praying in tongues and he's bubbling. It's getting in the inside of him and I'm praying but I'm listening to him and I would envy him. And, and, and sometimes the devil will come and whisper to me and say, you see, yours are not tongues. These are the real tongues. Until one day he called me, he said, Ben, uh, you know, he says, I've been born again ahead of you and I've been praying for all this while. As you become faithful with a little, God will make you ruler over much. God will increase. You will grow into it. And he gave me a perfect example. He says, a baby, when a baby starts speaking, he doesn't speak the whole sentence. He mumbles some few words, two, two words, three words. As the baby grows, he can put the whole sentence alone. And as the baby grows, he can put the whole paragraph you know the language of the baby is in direct proportion to the growth of the baby so he says the reason why i'm so you know i sound so articulate and i pray in tongues and then i get into these other dimensions is because i have been born again ahead of you and i have been praying all this while he said when i started i only had three words he says so stick with your four words become faithful become thankful to the lord become thankful and continue to pray and you will begin to grow from where you are man that's the best counsel i ever received and then i began to pray i began to pray and then one day as we were praying in an all-night prayer meetings all of a sudden it was like a well was open in the inside of me all of a sudden there are some dimensions of tongues that I got into. I started, it was that the, the river was gushing out in the inside of me. And I prayed for two hours non-stop. And that was a turning point. And I thought that was, you know, the, the climax. Until in 1987, 1988, I had another experience again. You know, something happened. You know, my wife sometimes would, would say this to me. He would say, did you hear that you, were, you burst out in the middle of the night and you spoke with deep tongues for 30 minutes? Did you hear that? And I would say, no, I have no idea. What are you talking about? Sometimes I will be conscious. I will wake up praying in tongues. Sometimes I would not. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what, what, when that happens, what's going on? And the Lord says, you're intercepting the plans of the enemy. Because at that time of the night, the enemy is active. There are certain things that are, you know, are happening unbeknown to me. But how many of you know that God neither slumbers nor sleep? The Holy Spirit in the inside of you doesn't sleep. Your spirit man also doesn't sleep. So whatever the enemy is planning, God is aware. And even when you are, your, your physical senses are, are, are temporarily suspended because you are asleep, your spiritual senses are still very much alive. So when I pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues, start where you are. Zigimari go sukiria bahando rodosata. Jegembra dazate. Lengido sukuria bagada. Now, this is a deep utterance. But I didn't start here. So as you come, start where you are. Don't despise the days of small beginning. You will grow from there. Now, if you want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, come quickly. Let's pray for you. Come. Pastors, please come and help me. We are closing the series today. There's an MP3 that we have. On the benefits of speaking with other tongues i won't have to teach that now i will make the will make the cd the cd the mp3 available so that you know the benefits if you 
are born again and you want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I want you to come. Pastors, please come. Captivate my heart, oh Lord. Let your kingdom come today. Establish now your throne. Oh Lord, let your will be done. Captivate my heart. Wait, don't pray for them yet. I will tell you. My heart. If you want the baptism with the Holy Spirit, please come. Oh Lord, let your kingdom come don't pray for them yet today establish now your throne oh Lord let your will be done Hallelujah. Maybe you are in this place. You say, I also want this experience, but I'm not born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. That's the starting point. If you are still seated, you need to come. There are people that are here already. So they're going to receive double. They're going to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit at the same time. Is there anybody like that? Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be born again. Anybody like that? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Anybody who is sitting down, you want to receive your, you know, Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Minister Tumelo, can you please come? Let's close our eyes. Those of you that want to receive Jesus, church, I want us to pray with them. As Minister Tumelo, pray. Uh, please let's pray after him to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Just lead them to Christ. Can we pray? Dear God in heaven, I come before your throne room of grace and mercy. I acknowledge that I'm in need of your salvation, of your dear son, of your dear son. I stand and I ask in the name of Jesus that Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sin. Become the Lord and Savior over my heart, over my life. In the name of Jesus, let your blood wash me from all sin. Your word says, as many have received you to them, you gave the power to become your children. Therefore, I stand to proclaim that I am your child. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, those of you that prayed this prayer, Jesus is now Lord and Savior of your life. Can we give God a big hand? And they qualify to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now, those of you that want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Pray this prayer after me. I will say it and then say it after me. All those of you that want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, raise up your hand as a sign of surrender. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, you are the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. As a child of God, I ask you, to baptize me with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues I believe I receive my heavenly prayer language right now by faith in Jesus name as hands are laid on me I will speak in tongues 
as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance by faith I receive right now in Jesus name and I thank you for it in Jesus name now lay hands on them and begin to pray for them to receive be done captivate my heart Your kingdom come today. Establish now your throne. 